name is Penny Meckley Porter. I am the owner of Thrive Therapy Space here in Erie, PA. And thanks for joining me today. So we are in the middle of a series on grief. It's just running for May, but we'll be talking about grief throughout the month of May. And what I am sharing with you is kind of um, a bit of a drop in the bucket uh, as far as like learning about grief and understanding grief and moving through your own grief. So I hope you look at this as kind of like a little introduction and a piece, hopefully, of your healing. Uh, I would like to recommend grief.com. Uh, it's put together by a guy, his, his name is David Kessler. He worked with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. He wrote books with her. Uh, she's the person who came up with the five stages of grief regarding one's own death. Anyway, I won't get into that. But so grief.com is an excellent resource. Today we're talking about 10 things that you can do um, to care for yourself when you are in the midst of grief whether it's grief over the loss of a loved one or grief over any other kind of loss. And this is from the resource I'm using today is VeryWellHealth, VeryWellHealth.com. So tips for caring for yourself in times of grief. First is um, seek and acknowledge, seek and accept support. So we're not meant to, to go through grief alone. We are, humans are a social species. We're meant to be connected with other people. It's good when we can offer support to others, but it's really lovely we, when we can ask for and accept support from others. It can be difficult. Sometimes we don't wanna ask for help and it feels like we owe somebody something if we accept support, but that's not, Picturing ourselves as part of an interwoven fabric of people and humans, and that yes, I try to support others, and yes, I try to accept support and even ask for support from others. Accept your grief, acceptance, acknowledging your grief, uh, instead of just trying to put a lid on it or sweep it aside, accepting that you are in grief and that it's difficult. But accepting it and allowing it is part of moving through it and processing it. Find role models. I like this one. You're not the first person to travel the road of grief. Your specific circumstances, indeed, they could be very unique. However, grief is such a difficult thing and we do know that others have experienced grief. And if you can reach out to those other people or picture maybe your grandmother or your great aunt, someone who you know experienced grief and use them as a model. How did they move through their grief? Is there anything that they did that really resonates with you? Perhaps they made a point of visiting the grave regularly. Perhaps they still spoke to the person. Perhaps they uh, wrote poetry about the person or just wrote poetry in general. Number four, learn about grief. Oftentimes we have ideas about grief that are just the things that we've heard from society and they're not really based in um, reality that, you know, grief should be short, uh, grief shouldn't be too painful. Um, we should move through grief relatively quickly and if you're still grieving after a year, you're taking too long. Those aren't true. So if you learn about grief, then you'll recognize that your grief is normal and that it's not just you who is struggling in, in some different kind of way. And also learning about grief could help you if you are still grieving in really deep throes of grieving after a year, uh, then perhaps you're experiencing complicated grief. Um, after a year or two, right? So lear learn about it. Because uh, if your grief is getting complicated and it's not really healing at all, it never heals all the way, it doesn't. But if you're not noticing any healing or easing at all, then it could be that you're in complicated grief and it really would be great to see a therapist or a counselor. Five, express your grief. We really don't want the grief to stay hidden, like kind of a hard, hidden thing deep within us. So expressing it, 
whether you talk with people about it, whether you talk with uh, someone who's passed about it in your own kind of way, writing poetry, letting it out. You could cry, you could scream, you could yell, you could use music, art, poetry, journaling. Finding a way to express your grief is a way to honor your grief and to honor what was lost. Number six, accept your feelings. Uh, grief can bring many feelings to the surface. I mean, you know, we just kind of expect to feel sad and some pain. Um, but there's so many other things that come along with grief so often, including anger and resentment. So many emotions can come along with grief and do indeed come along with grief. Number seven is pace yourself. Grief is overwhelming. It's tiring. It's exhausting. It's very difficult. And so whatever pace I have in life in general, let's say I'm somebody who kind of rushes through life and I keep up a really fast pace and I do all kinds of different things. Okay, so maybe that's me and who I've been. If we add grief on top of that or in with that, then it's good to slow down on some of the other things. Take some time to take care of yourself and do the things we're talking about. Take some time to, for a bubble bath. Take some time to walk along the lake. Give yourself some extra time to sleep, to nurture yourself, because grief is another big responsibility you have in addition to all the other responsibilities. So if we can lower something else so that you really have time to spend with your grief. Get involved in something. It can be something big or small, but it can be really helpful to have other things that you're involved in so that when you go to do that other thing, you're absorbed in that other thing. Um, if it's meaningful to you, that can be really helpful. If it's helpful to other people, that can help you in your, great, in your grief. I have a plant that I take care of. It's my grandmother's gardenia. And uh, it is very meaningful to me because it's at least 30 years old, if not 40 years old. And today, maybe I should have brought a picture. Today it has over 22 open flowers. And of course it smells all throughout the house, um, through the first floor of the house. And taking care of my grandmother's gardenia is meaningful to me. Uh, I remember when she had it when I was a kid. I know it's brought joy to many different people. It brings joy to me. And I know it brought joy to my grandmother, so I guess it kind of connects me to her. So that's something that I do, and it doesn't take that much time. Have a little fun. Sometimes when people are grieving, they feel like it's not okay to have fun. Uh, my A good family friend, um, her son, he's also a good family friend, when his grandfather died, he was wondering if at the funeral, when he was with all of his cousins, and he doesn't get to be with his cousins very often, he asked me, would it be okay if he had fun with his cousins? Like, how do you put the two together? How do you put the two together? You're in such deep grief about something that you've lost or someone whom you've lost, but at the same time, can you laugh? Yes, you can. Can you enjoy the people that you're with? Yes, you can. I was struck by when my great-grandmother died in uh, Mineola, Texas, and I was a teenager. I was struck by how awesome it was to be together with all of those people, even though the reason we got together was this sadness over the end of her life. And of course, she lived a long life, and so the sadness is different when someone dies when they're 85 years old versus when someone dies when they're much younger. Yes, it's definitely different. I don't mean to say they're the same. Lastly, number 10 is keep the faith. What I mean is if there's a way for you to believe that you will heal 
from grief. I don't mean that the grief ends and you never feel it again, but that the constant pain of constant grief over time will ease. And there'll be lot bigger spaces between your periods of pain. And that indeed, hopefully in the future, you will be able to look back on the thing you lost and have the fondness and the goodness in there with the pain and the grief. So being able to look back on someone and not just feeling the pain and grief, but also the positives about that person and being able to smile about that person or the thing that is lost. So, okay, let's do our mindfulness activity now. The mindfulness portion of our time together, I mean to say our mindfulness activity. It sounds like we're a bunch of kindergartners, but anyway, let's do our mindfulness activity. So I would like you to sit comfortably in your chair. Close your eyes if that's comfortable. Relax into your chair. So allowing that chair to support you in this very minute, allowing yourself to just sink into the chair. Bring your awareness now to your breath. Feeling or hearing the inhalation. Feeling or hearing the exhalation. Noticing each breath. Noticing each inhale. Noticing each exhale. And for your next three breaths, taking in a normal inhalation and exhaling a little bit longer than usual. Inhaling. Exhale a little bit longer. Inhale. Exhale a little bit longer. Again, inhale. Exhale a little bit longer. Very good job. I'd like you to kind of in your mind's eye, picture a person in your life who has been or was very affirming and compassionate with you. It can be someone from today in your life now who loves you dearly and has been compassionate. It can be someone from your past. I might pick my grandma Meckley, the one whose gardenia I have. It can be someone who has already passed. It could be an animal that you have who you know loves you so deeply. Bringing your awareness to that person or animal, how much they love you. And allow yourself to feel their love for you. Allowing their love to wash over you or to envelop you.
then bringing your awareness to their compassion, to the compassion that they had and have for you. Allowing yourself to feel that caring and compassion. Feeling it wash over you. Feeling it envelop you. their caring and their compassion for you. Allowing yourself again to feel that and also to be accessing your own compassion for yourself. Whether this is easy for you to access your own compassion or whether it's difficult and you feel kind of undeserving. Accessing compassion for yourself, whether it's big or there's just a small whiff of it. Feeling compassion from yourself and others. Feeling caring for yourself from others, from yourself and others. Acknowledging that what you have been going through is difficult. We're not comparing it, no comparing what you've gone through with what someone else has gone through. We are not comparing we're acknowledging the difficulty of what you've gone through. We're embracing you with compassion and care and love. Bringing your awareness back to your breath Noticing the inhale and the exhale. Opening your eyes whenever you're ready. I'd like you to come back next week when we talk about healing as possible with grief. Grief and healing as possible and the week after recognizing and healing collective grief. And from me today to you today, may you be happy, may you be healthy, may you be safe, and may you find peace. Hope to see you again next week.